In this course, I'm going to be teaching you everything you need to know to get started with profitable betting strategies with software. If you're looking to make a bit of money on the side through arbitrage risk-free betting or to do a bit more complex strategies like positive EV betting, or if you just want to see what the process is like and how the software works for assisting you when it comes to profitable betting strategies, then this is for you. People often think that sports betting is either like gambling or very risky and you can't make much money, but really that's not true if you have a mathematically proven strategy. And while yes, there is a small learning curve at the beginning, once you get the hang of it, which should be hopefully pretty quick by the end of this lesson, then all you really need to do after that is just press some buttons and it will help you make money. So today I'll do a full run through of what you need to know from start to finish and basically hold your hand all the way through with real time examples and actual bets so you can get past the initial learning curve and be able to know how to do everything yourselves. So let's get into it. Today we'll be using Odds Jam to learn arbitrage positive EV betting. I have videos on the first two so watch those if you don't know what they are and then come back to this one. So firstly, what is Odds Jam? Odds Jam is essentially like a software that the main benefit it has is that it scrapes the odds from various sports books. So you don't need to do manual checks. If you were to, for example, go through a sports book, like for example, Sportsbet, and then look for their odds, um, for every sport you need to go through manually and all the different markets that will take a very, very long time. So the main benefit of Odds Jam is it scrapes all the odds for you and compiles it neatly into a software package that can actually be used to generate profitable bets. And as for example, we can see here the NBA lines, we can see all the different sports books and where the best odds kind of are. Um, we can also go to their screen, which shows more real time odds across all the different sports books. So it shows sports books across all the ones here um, that they have and gives you the best odds. So this right now by itself, the raw data isn't very useful, but I'll show in a bit why, how can you use that information to make some profitable bets. And if you go to Odds Jam's About Us page, what they say is they're a leading provider of premium sports betting news and data. And the founder of Odds Jam is Alex. Um, here and he worked at SIG which is one of the leading proprietary trading firms um, and he worked as a quant trader which is a background that is very useful for arbitrage betting as it's similar concepts they might do arbitrage on stock markets whereas now Ozjam does arbitrage and positive expected value trading on sports markets so they're very similar concepts there so who can actually benefit from Odds Jam? Well, let's take a look at the locations they currently offer. So it kind of depends on what sports books you have access to. So right now they have sports books across the United States, across Canada, across Europe, and some other parts of the world, like for me, Australia and Mexico. And you might be able to have access to um, some of these sports books that they have. Um, if not, it probably isn't the right software for you and you need to probably find um, the right software for your country. So assuming that you are from one of these countries, um, if you are in the US, you can also look at their legalization tracker because not all states in the United States currently um, have regulated gambling and therefore it may not be allowed for you to be able to place bets online. But um, this is a tracker of all the states that are legalized. So, for example, if you're in New York or New Jersey, um, you can bet and you can bet online as well. So to take a look at their plans, um, you can also do a free trial. Link is in the card here or also in the description. And you can start your seven day betting tools trial. Um, or you can, so that's the first betting tools. This is the most basic plan that they have. It contains a few of the tools they have and a few of the um, markets that they have. Additionally, they also have the screen, which was what you just saw, and I'll go into detail a bit later down the line, um, which shows all the betting market odds in real time side by side. 
However, the one I would probably recommend if you wanted to arbitrage and positive EV betting is go to the betting tools tab um, after you click on start your free trial and the one you want to be looking at is the middle one, the industry plan. So this has a few more features compared to the basic plus plan which is the positive EV betting and arbitrage betting tools and these are the ones we generally will want to use and I'll demonstrate in a little while. And you can see more detail about all the features down below when you compare the plans. The main ones we want are arbitrage and positive EV betting. Some of the other tools are also helpful and I'll go over how they work in a little while. And they also enable email notifications so you don't need to be manually checking odds jam as well. You can get them straight delivered to your uh, email address. So having a look at their plans, they have weekly, monthly and yearly options. Um, weekly is the most expensive per week, monthly gives you a bit more of a discount and yearly gives you an even greater discount. The one I would personally recommend is the monthly one as it's a bit cheaper than the weekly one um, if you compare the monthly pricing and the yearly one is a little bit inflexible. The monthly one gives you more flexibility in case you do need to um, stop the subscription or like a few months later if your accounts are all restricted and there's no more bets that you're allowed to place because the sports books aren't letting you place bets with them anymore and it no longer becomes viable. So I'll generally recommend the monthly plan and the industry plan is the one I am currently using. And you also do have a seven day free trial period as well um, to get a feel of what the product is like and see if it can help you much or not. So now assuming that you've signed up or registered for the free trial and are now logged in, once you get to the main screen, there will be a welcome page and first thing you want to do is change your location. So depending on which state you're in, you might have access to different sports books or not have access to certain sports books. So you want to change that. Um, for me, I am in Australia and that is where I'll be setting my location to. And that's very important as we will see in a little while. So now after you've changed your location, you'll see at the top there is sports. So the sports page shows you the odds for different sports. And this by itself, as I said, isn't very useful, but um, there's also tools. And this is the most important tab. There's arbitrage tools and also positive EV bets. So, so you need to adjust your filters at the moment saying no arbitrage, but if I set it to the next seven days, you can see there's a few arbitrage bets in my area that I can go ahead and place. One common misconception of arbitrage bets is that it is not very profitable as you're only making a few percent returns each time. But um, why it is so good is that it's risk-free and it compounds. So a few percent might not sound like a lot compared to like stock markets, but do remember stock market returns are over a period of a year. These returns are over a period of one day or a few days and it compounds a lot more quickly. So the returns are much greater in the long run. So let's say even this 2% arbitrage, if I have $500 either side, I make $21 risk-free. And if I place a few of these together, that adds up to a few hundred dollars pretty quickly. So one thing you'll see here is that there's many different sports books. For example, if you click, if you hover over it, it will show what the sports book is called. My bookie, every game, uni bet, bet365, lad brokes, points bet. And there's just a lot of different sports books that are available. Um, depending on your location, you might not have access to all of them, or you might have access to different ones. Um, one important thing is that it's very important to sign up to all the sports books that you can have access to because that will mean more opportunities. Um, as we can see, if we only had access to Unibet and Bet365, we wouldn't actually be able to place these few bets over here because we will need different sports books. But um, if you have access to other sports books, then we can place more arbitrage bets and positive expected value bets. So one way you can find out which sports books you can sign up to is if you go to resources and go to free bets. At the moment in Australia, it's quite limited, but let's say I was in New York or anywhere else in the United States. So then I can see I have a lot of other sports book options that they can recommend. 
So what you can do is actually read the review of each of these sports books. So for example, I go to FanDuel Sportsbook Review, which is the most popular sports book in the United States. Um, then you can have a read about which states that you can access FanDuel in, whether it's in Canada, um, and what sports they actually have on offer. So for example, you can see they have sports like even Australia football and what you need to do to get signed up. So some of them have some strict requirements like you need to have a social security number, which means I personally cannot access FanDuel because I'm not in the United States, um, I don't have a physical address there, and I don't have a social security number. And you can also check out what some other things about them are like, like for example their customer support and their mobile app, which you can use to place bets on as well. And they compare it to DraftKings, which is the other biggest sports book in the United States. And they also tell you what promotions they generally have, which is a great source of value and good money and arbitrage opportunities as well. So some of the screenshots are here, like an opt-in required. If you place $20 on a same game parlay, you'll get a $10 bonus back in credits. Or there's insurance, which is a four-leg parlay. Um, if you, only one of your legs loses, then you get a refund of up to $25. There's also Boost, which improves the odd for certain markets, and you can get arbitrage opportunities at those as well. And they tell you whether you have to opt into their promotions or not, or if you're automatically eligible, or if you need to click opt in to get access to those promotions. So you can have a review of all the sports books by clicking on the review. There's some first risk-free bet offers, but if you click on the claim $200 or however much that is, depending on what the sports book is currently offering, but you'll see what other sports books are available and what might not be available depending on what state you are in. So it's very well built out for the United States. Um, at the moment, not so much for Australia, but you can review the sports books here if you're in the United States or Canada. So now on to another important concept, which is fair odds. So if I were to, for example, go to the positive expected value tab, we can see a lot of the odds that they give us are from Pinnacle or Odds Jam. So effectively, they're the same thing. Pinnacle and Odds Jam line is effectively, they're always going to be the same. And you can see here in this column, there's something called No Big Odds and something called Width. If you click on it, um, it will tell you what it means. Essentially, No Big Odds is the fair odds for an event after the VIG has been removed. So firstly, what is the VIG? Um, we can do that with an example. So if we use Pinnacle, which is the sharpest sports book um, that a lot of arbitrage bettors use, Oddstream has three sharp sports books that they can use to scrape good odds from. And one is Pinnacle, which we can see here. The other two are Bovada and Bet Online. So how sharp sports books work is that odds are a lot better than regular sports books. So if I take Pinnacle example, which is a sharp sports book, and if I compare that to sports bet, if I go to the same game, NBA game, Celtics and Nuggets, we can see Celtics here is 1.85 compared to 1.81, and Nuggets is 2.06 compared to 2.04, so slightly better. And 1.9, 1.9 for the handicap compared to 1.93 and 1.97. So we get better odds on Pinnacle. And that is pretty much not 100% the case, but pretty much nearly always because the odds are better. And that's what makes make them sharp. They're more accurate pricing. So we can use these to determine the fair odds in the case where we don't have a betting exchange. And we can do something called removing the VIG. So firstly, let me change this to American Odds, um, just to be able to use the Odds Jam tool. So what is Novig betting and how to calculate the Novig Odds? Essentially, um, if you don't want to read through this, is sportsbooks always take a little cut of from the fair odds. So if the fair odds was 2 or plus 100, they're only going to offer you 1.9, or even in the case 
well, Pinnacle, like a sharp sports book, they're still only offering you 1.93 or 1.97 instead of 2. And that's the juice or the vig that they keep. So that's how sports books make money. They give you odds that are less than the fair odds. So an example of that is Boston Celtics versus Lakers, an even line. One person bets 110 on one team, the other person bets 110 on the other team. And DraftKings, the sports book, will pay $100 profit to one person and collect 110 from the other person. So they've just made a risk-free $10 profit. And basically, by giving you worse odds than the fair odds, that's how sports books make money. So no VIG is when we remove that juice. So how to calculate that? We can get the implied percentage down to 100%. So for example, in this part, for maybe the odds for a higher state is 180, and the other team is plus 155. And let's use their calculator. So, so if you go to calculators and you go to VIG calculator, it will tell you what the VIG is or what percentage profit the sports book is keeping for themselves. So for the first bet, we have it as minus 180. This means you have to bet $180 to win $100 in profit. And the other one is plus 155. So 155. What 155 means is if you bet $100, you'll get 155 in profit. That's how American odds work. And this will tell you the VIG is 3.5%. This means roughly for about every $100 that people bet on these two teams, assuming it's evenly split up um, in terms of how strong the teams are, then the sports book will keep 3.5% of that profit. So they'd make $3.50 risk-free. Um, so what this is saying is the two probabilities add up to 103%. Using these odds, it implies Ohio State has a 64.3% chance to win and the other team has a 39.2% chance to win. If you add that up, that's 103%, which doesn't make sense because the sum of the probabilities should add up to 1. It's either one team wins or the other team wins, assuming that a draw is not possible. And that additional 3% is how much a sportsbook is keeping in profit. So... In the case for sports books like uh, Sportsbet, um, that VIG will be higher than the VIG for Pinnacle, which is gives you better odds, closer to fair odds, so the VIG they have is less. And we can use Pinnacle's odds, and if we remove that VIG, then we can get the fair odds. So why fair odds is useful um, is just think about it this way, if you know the fair odds, then all you need to do is find odds that are higher than the fair odds, and that will give you a positive expected value bet. So now we can go ahead and calculate the no VIG odds using Odds Jam's tool, and they have a calculator for that. So if you go to calculators, and now I go to the no VIG fair odds calculator, we can enter in those odds again. So we had that example was minus 180. And that other example was 155. So instead of a 64.3% chance removing the VIG, it says there's a 62.1% chance for the first team to win and a 37.9% chance for the other team to win instead of a 39.2. And that gives the fair odds of negative 163.93 and plus 163.93. And these should always be opposite and equal in number. So 163 negative, 163 positive. What that means is someone has to bet 163 to gain 100, someone has to bet 100 to gain 163. And that should give the sportsbook no profit if that was the case. So now we know these are the fair odds. And how it works is it subtracts a proportion 
of the implied percentage. So from 64.3 to 62.1 and the other one from 39.2 to 37.9 and make sure that the probabilities are up to 100%. So it's removed 2% roughly from here, removed 1.3% roughly from here. And that's because this percentage is higher, so it would reduce in that same proportion. Um, it's not a perfect way of finding the fair odds, but it's pretty close. Um, you do have to note though, like it's not perfect, and like it can be off by a few, like 0.5% or something around those lines. Um, but generally, it is pretty accurate. However, one thing you have to note is the higher the VIG is, so if this was minus 200 and this was 120, um, this VIG is quite high. And we can find that out by going back to calculators, VIG calculator minus 200 and 140, the VIG is 8%. So the higher the VIG, the less accurate the no VIG calculator is because it's uncertain where exactly the ferrule should be. It's not always in the middle, it might be a little bit on each side of the middle. And if the spread is very, very wide, you don't know where in between it should sit. It might sit like right in the middle or a little bit to one side. And if that spread is wide, that little bit that it's off by could be very large. So now we know a rough way of how to find the fair odds. We can find the fair odds of Boston Celtics and Denver Nuggets game. So let me change this to American odds. And we can see what the VIG is. Minus 117 and 106. So the VIG here is 2.46%, which is pretty good, pretty small. Now if you go to something like player props, um, for example, Al Horford, 3-point field goals, over 1.5 and under 1.5 if we have 152 and minus 213 we can see the VIG is a lot larger so 7.73 and this means the juice that the sportsbook is taking in this case Pinnacle is quite high and it will be even higher for a regular sportsbook so the VIG is less for Pinnacle and that's why if the VIG is less then it means the fair odds calculator using the no VIG cal using the no VIG fair odds calculator will be more accurate. So we can calculate the fair odds for over and under 1.3 field goals by entering these two numbers: 213, 152. It's saying the fair odds should be minus 171.49. Now, if you're not in the United States or you're not familiar with American odds, and you might use decimal or fractional odds instead. What you can do is you can go to your account, go to profile, go to the overview and change the odds format. So you can go to American odds, you can change to decimal odds, you can change to fractional or even probability. Um, decimal odds, if I do that, you can save the changes. Then now when I go to the calculator for the VIG calculator, If I want to find the VIG for sports bet, I can enter in 1.82 as a, just the decimal odds. And we can see the VIG is 4.45%, which is larger than what it was for this market for Pinnacle. So Pinnacle has a smaller VIG and allows us, if we remove the VIG um, using that proportional reduction, um, then it's more accurate with Pinnacle's odds. So that's how we find the fair odds and you can have a practice with that across any two-way market game. So it can't be like a soccer game where like there's a win, draw, win. Um, it has to be a two-way market. So this works for over 1.5 and under 1.5 because it can't be exactly 1.5 um, as the number of three-pointers has to be a whole number. So it can either be this one or that one. It can't be both and it can't be neither. So that's how we can get the fair odds for each particular event across any two-way market. So OddsGerm does also have other calculators like a basic arbitrage and expected value calculator. Now that I've switched to decimal odds, let's say 
for one side of the bit I find odds of 2.01 and the other side I find odds of 2.1 and if I want to enter in $100 for my first bet then for the other bet I will bet, need to bet 95.71 to guarantee a risk-free profit of $5.29. Um, it all calculates it for you and it's a 2.63% arbitrage. Now this is a hypothetical example um, and this tool by itself is kind of made redundant and so is the expected value calculator tool because they have, um, sorry the calculator, they do have arbitrage um, as a tool in itself um, as you can see here, they give you the percentage and if you enter it in here, it will be the exact same thing for a real life example. And it's the same for a positive EV bet. So it will give you the percentage and it will tell you how much to wager depending on your stake size. So let's cover the arbitrage tool first. So it might say no arbitrage bets, you might need a refresh, um, sometimes there might not actually be any, um, or you might need to set the date range. So I don't really like to do the next seven days. Um, you can also set a custom date range to, let's say, up to three days. And that will give you only ones up to the 3rd of January, and that is because I don't want to be betting on things like two weeks later, um, and having my money locked away for a long time. So how do you filter for the right arbitrage opportunities? You can set the minimum percentage, you might want that to be at least a 1% arbitrage. With sports books, you can choose um, which sports books you have access to. So if you don't have access to the global sports books, you can probably untick that. Um, if you do, you can tick that. Um, for me, I'll untick that. And you can also remove sports books where you've been restricted on already. So I might remove Neds, um, and I might remove Palm Bet and Sports Bet, for example. You can choose a sport. So um, generally, I like to just keep things as it is, and the league I like to keep as it is. Um, now, main market, alternative market, and player prop. I like to generally stick with main market and alternative markets. Um, for player props, I want a higher percentage um, arbitrage because player prop bets are more likely to be seen by the sports books as suspicious um, or like they know, think you're getting value and therefore might restrict you faster. Um, maximum odds you can set as well if you want minimum odds or maximum odds, but for now I'll just leave that as it is. I can also go to settings and I can manage my filters so I can exclude these sports books which I don't have access to for example bet online I can't actually access from Australia so I can add that in and that will mean it won't show me bet online's odds for possible arbitrage opportunities. So what you can do after you've set your filters, you can choose to save your filter. And for example, I'll call this a test. And you can choose to get email alerts from this filter. Um, so if an arbitrage opportunity pops up, then it will come straight to your inbox. So here, if I want a minimum percentage requirement of say 3% arbitrage, right now there aren't any. Um, but if I go ahead and save that filter and get email alerts the instant they appear, then I will see that and not have to check myself manually. And this is an important point is because why does arbitrage bets exist even in the first place? Um, that is because it's a sports book mispricing. So a sports book has made a kind of mistake in their odds. They're not very accurate and another sports book has more accurate odds or odds in the opposite direction and if you combine those two together it will create an arbitrage opportunity. So one important thing about arbitrage bets is they don't stick around forever. Um, the very good arbitrage opportunities, for example the ones 3% and higher, uh, they will disappear within a few minutes or even sometimes like 30 seconds of the bets appearing. 
So what you need to do is be very, very fast. Um, they're not there just for you to, they're not free money just for you to take. They will disappear. If arbitrage bets always existed, then that would be kind of too easy. And that's why there's a conception that oh, arbitrage bets don't actually exist. Um, because that's just because they can't actually find any themselves either manually, which is very, very hard. Um, unless you're creating synthetic arbitrages using promotional offers. But with software, it is actually very possible to find arbitrage opportunities. And they generally appear um, right when sportsbooks post their odds. So a sportsbook like uh, Fangio or Sportsbet might post their odds. And at that time, Pointsbet has already posted their odds and they're not in line with sportsbooks odds. And that's when arbitrage exists. Now, a few people will find that arbitrage and start betting on that. Once they start betting on that, the sportsbook will see there's a lot of volume coming in on one side of the bet and they'll adjust their odds until the arbitrage no longer is, exists. So that's why arbitrage bets are, they're not rare, they happen quite a lot, but they don't last for a very, very long time. So you do have to be quick when you are getting on them. And I'll demonstrate this with an example when one does pop up in my email. So right now, if I don't set a minimum up percentage, um, so if I set that to zero, we can see there are a few ARBs, one of 1.52% and another of a few that have been here for a while, less than 1%. Now, these might exist for a little bit longer because um, people who do arbitrage betting a lot, they might not want this because it does lock your money away for at least another day and you're only getting 0.8% uh, when you could be waiting for a better opportunity to come along. So now I'll do a demonstration of a live arbitrage bet. So here I can see Buffalo Bills versus Cincinnati Bengals uh, football game on Tuesday, January the 3rd. There's an arbitrage of 1.39% between Unibet and Bet365. Now the reason why I don't bet on the first opportunity, which is actually better, is because Ladbrokes um, they've actually restricted me already and won't let me place any bets with them. So what you want to do is go to both sportsbooks at the same time and find out how much to bet. So I like to split it up into two screens. So I have bet365 and Unibet on the other. Now I want to find this market. So Buffalo Bills. So it's this game and it's total points. So I'm looking for alternative total two way and this is over and under 61.5. So on bet365 I'm betting the under, so under 61.5. which is odds of 1.28, um, let me just check. So it's 1.2857 actually, if I bet 100 I'm getting 128.57, which is correct. Um, it's rounding up to 1.29, so if I just go back to that. Yeah, 1.286. Now let's say I want to bet $100 then I need to bet 26.79 on Unibet. So I'm going to look for the same game. So it's important for an arbitrage, you have to place both bets almost simultaneously. Otherwise, you won't actually be able to get an arbitrage. Now I just got an email notification actually from Oddjam, so. And I can see this one has popped up um, and it was under test too. So that was a 1.52% and it's between these two sports books. So now going back to Unibet, I will search the same team, Buffalo Bills and Bengals, and I want to go to the totals. So I want to find 61. Now, this one's giving me odds of 4.8 for the overs, which is correct. So 4.8 and 1.286. So that's all correct. Now, how much do you want to actually bet? Now, 
if I enter in $100 on Bet365, I'll get 128.57 profit, and I need to bet 26.79 on Unibet to get the same payout. Now, this guarantees me $1.79. Now, this is very, very small, um, and you can size up a bit more, so maybe 500 and 134, or 133.93. Generally, I like to round to the nearest full number, so I might do 135 and just 504. Uh, 500. I like to stick with 500 and this one I might do 135. Um, it will tell me to bet 133.93 but I'd bet 135. And now $9 seems a bit more reasonable as a good profit so we can go ahead and bet that. Now you want to be placing your bets one right after the other in case the odds do change. So have them both ready at the same time. So this one um, I'm just going to do $100 on Bet365 and 26.79 on Unibet. And that's because, one, I only have 38.57 on my account. And uh, basically, they've already restricted me, saying I can't bet too large sums. So um, I'm only going to do a small bet as an example. So firstly, I want to do two bets at the same time. Now... I'll go ahead and place this bet. Now that is placed. Now almost instantaneously I want to go to the other one and place that bet of 35. So, ah uh, sorry, not 35, it was 27. So I just ran up to the nearest number. Um, now I'll go ahead and place that bet, check it's the correct thing, over and that one was under, approve. And see, it says my stake is too high. So that's something you've got to be careful of, and this is not a pure arbitrage because there's that risk of your stakes on one side not being allowed through. So this wouldn't really happen um, at the start if you're just starting off, as long as you size reasonable amounts. So as long as you're not doing things like betting 2,000 and 500 on the other side to get like $35 profit, which um, is a bit too much. Anything like 500 or less should be okay generally at the start. So they will normally allow you on for that. But Unibet is not happy with me, so they're only going to allow me to bet $7.74. So I'll go ahead and place that bet. Now, the good thing why I place the Bet365 bet first is because I know Bet365 has a feature where I can cash out for the original amount that I bet, or I can cash out for less. So if I go for that, and I can do a partial cash out, so I want to cash out an amount. Now, normally sportsbooks won't let you to do this, but Bet365 is actually one of the good ones that allows you to do this, which is really, really nice. Um, so now I need to readjust my dollar amount. So here I bet $7.74. That means on Bet365, I want to be betting $28.90. So I'll go to $28. I want to cash out uh, 100 minus that. So I want to cash out 71.1. So that will leave me with $28.90 left. So done. So... My remaining stake is 28.9, I can make 37.15, and we can see it's gone back into my account. So this way I've guaranteed a profit of 52 cents. Now it's pretty much nothing, and generally I wouldn't do this bet, but I'm just doing it as an example, and that's because Unibet is actually, uh, my account has been restricted and they're only letting me bet tiny, tiny amounts. So, But just to demonstrate this arbitrage, that's kind of how it would work. And um, one other thing you've got to be careful of is for the over 61, under 61. You have to know what happens if it is exactly 61. Now, I, I do know this, and I didn't have to check this, but you would have to read their terms and conditions to be on the safe side. But uh, if it is exactly 61, your stake would just get refunded on both sides. And that's what Unibet and Bet365 both do. If one of them was exactly 61 and you didn't win then you would just um, lose that bet 
then that is not an arbitrage because you're quite exposed to if it's exactly 61 then you can lose a lot of money so that's something else you have to be very very careful of so after that you've placed these bets what you can do is add this to the bet tracker so now if I bring this tab back so I can see the whole screen um, I can see these are all correct and I will save that into the bet tracker so if I go to my bet tracker I go to bets I can see I have a pending bet of this one here the uni bet and bet 365 now some of these bets will get automatically um, assessed and graded so if your bet wins bet 36 will know that um, oh, sorry, uh, Odds Jam will find that out and automatically mark it as lost or won. So one of these will be marked as won, one of these will be marked as lost. And then that will this, this table of all your bets um, will go into your dashboard. So then this is the way to manage all your bets. So here I can see my total profit across all my bets was 2,683 that I did end up tracking. I have $37 of bets in pending, so the one I just placed. Um, the average return on investment was 3%. So that was the average size of my arbitrage opportunity. And we can also break it down into which week I made money. So I did it across three weeks before most of my accounts got restricted. Um, which sports books I made or lost money mostly came from points bet and uni bet and that's because points bet and uni bet were probably the legs of the arbitrage that were positive expected value and the other legs from bet365 or tab were probably not definitely they were probably um, the hedge bet or negative expected value and we can also see a lot of my profit came from basketball soccer and football soccer especially during the world cup and which league came from mostly from the NBA and whether it was from arbitrage or positive EV I actually lost some money from positive EV um, but that's because it was a small sample size and not a lot so that is how you track your bets it all gets managed neatly for you and you can see your profit across time as well so if you go to resources and have a look at the bet tracker guide, it will have more information telling you how to use it. And it will tell you also which sports have the these automatically graded for you. So it will tell you, for example, NBA, all these get graded. So player assist bets, um, Odds Jam will automatically scrape the NBA database um, and find out whether your bet won or lost. And that way you don't have to manually say mark it as one or lost manually. You can just get it automatically assessed. But you do have to wait a little bit of time um, before that happens. And this is a list of the remaining things that they automatically grade for you. You can have a look at that in your own time. So that was arbitrage bets. And we've covered that now. So let's take a look at the other type of bet, um, which is positive EV betting. So to do that, we can go to Odds Jam Tools positive EV and that will bring up positive expected value bets um, for where, whichever sports books you have and once again you can filter and customize this so sports books if I say only all Australian sports books and remove the global ones that will show only the ones I can actually bet on so that was with all global sports books and now I only have Australian ones then that helps me filter those up and I can say I want it to be in the next 24 hours or the next seven days and I can save this filter as let's say positive EV filter and I can choose to get email alerts for this type of bet as well so if I save that then So now I've saved those filters, let's take a look at placing a bet for a positive expected value bet. Um, let me just quickly refresh. 
And we can see the best one here is this one, under 235 total points for the Celtics versus Nuggets game at 1.9 odds. Now, what do all these things mean? So percentage is the expected return, um, or the amount of expected value we have from this bet, which is 2.48%. This is not that high. Normally, I would only do ones that are like 5% or higher, but for the purposes of this demonstration, um, I will go ahead and place this. So, what is also recommended bet size? Now, this comes from something called the Kelly Criterion, which is something that determines how much you should bet based on firstly the risk and also how good of an opportunity that is and how much money you have for your bankroll which is how much money you can bet in total how much money you have so if you click the question mark that are here you can set your bankroll so let's enter your bankroll if i have a bankroll of one thousand dollars let's say um, i have one thousand dollars in the bank account that i can place bets for and the Kelly multiplier you can either set to 0 0.5 or 1. And just set that to 1. So what Kelly criterion is, is if you go to calculator and go to Kelly calculator, it will explain what Kelly criteria is. So it basically determines how much you should bet to make sure you don't go broke. Um, if there is a positive EV opportunity, because there is still some risk involved, you could still end up losing the bet. And obviously we need to factor in this risk and make sure we're sizing responsibly and we're not betting all our money on one positive EV opportunity. It might be a very good positive EV opportunity and we can bet more on it, but we have to be responsible. If that does lose, then we've lost a lot of our money and we might not be able to continue betting. So. It helps us to size sustainably, and it's the optimal mathematical method. Um, you don't really need to know the formula, but it determines how much percentage of your bankroll you should bet based on how good the opportunity is and how likely you are to win, which we can determine from the fair odds. So let's say our Kelly multiplier is just 1, and the odds are 2.5. So our percentage chance of winning, let's say, is 70%, uh, sorry, 45%. Our expected value is 12, and if this we set as 1, we should bet 8.33% of our bankroll. If it was, say, 40%, uh, 42%, we should bet 3.33% of our bankroll. So in that case, we'd be betting $33.30. So you can read a bit more about it. Um, what's the optimal bet size is basically what it helps figure out. And there's this calculator tool, uh, which isn't that helpful, but uh, the calculator, Kelly calculator, but you can use, it's already incorporated in the positive EV tool. So this is based, this dollar amount is based on the Kelly criterion. And I've set my bankroll to $1,000. So let me go ahead and place that filter. And we can see this is the best positive EV opportunity. Let's just go ahead and click this calculator and see what it says. So we have a 53.91% chance of winning according to the pinnacle fair odds. Um, our Kelly multiplier of 1 means we should bet $27.50. Um, it's rounded up to 30 because we want to be betting in full dollar amounts, so that's why it says 30. And this game is tomorrow, so it's a good opportunity to place. Now, no big odds, what does this mean? This is the fair odds determined from how we did the no big calculation from a bit earlier. And saying the fair rod should be 1.85, but we're getting 1.9, which is where our 2.48% edge is coming from. And what does width mean? It's basically how wide the sportsbook margin is that we're using to determine the fair odds, which is we see pinnacle sportsbook or the odds jam line, which is pretty much the same thing. They're just um, the exact same values. And if we click on this, we'll see all the odds. So Pinnacle is actually 2.14 and 1.77 for this bet, but we see we're getting 1.91 here. And it's way better than the Pinnacle odds, and that's across 
the fair odds of 1.85 and therefore its positive expected value. So we can go ahead and once again place this bet. So if I go to tab, and we want to look for this bet opportunity, which is in the NBA. So that is this game. We want to find the total points under 235.5. So, pick your own total. A lot of the time you will find is um, looking for these bets. So, you want to, you don't always know where you're going to find it, and there's a lot of things to look through. So, once you know where it is, then it's easy to look for. So, I know it's in pick your own total because I've bet on this before, and it was 235.5. And it was the under 235.5. So we want to bet the under 235.5. So if we go that bet recommendation of $30 and go ahead and place that bet. So make sure it's the right bet you're placing and it's gone through. So $30 generally won't be rejected. Um, you can size up more if you want, if you have a larger bankroll, if you have 10,000, you can just bet 300. Um, so if you do bet $30, then you make 2.48% of that, which really isn't a lot. So if you get a calculator, 2.48 times 30 divided by 100 is only 75 cents of expected value. So it's not really worthwhile to do small amounts for positive EV. Um, you do want to be sizing up more and being able to take on that risk. But just for that example, that's what I've demonstrated. And as I can see here, I can just add this to the bet tracker. And here I can say, save that as entering the amount staked, which is $30. And save that into my bet. So you can see, I've already placed a bet here. And... Um, it's put a tick there. So you could do another one, Drake minus 1.5. So this is college basketball. So I can search for Drake, Missouri State at versus Drake. And it is Drake minus 1.5. So this one here. And here we can see the fair odds. Uh, across all the sports books, there's about 1.9, 1.9, about close to 2 for the other one, but 1.75 of tab. And on the other side, it's 2.05. So this is actually an arbitrage, but this is the positive expected value where it is. Uh, we can see Pinnacle is pretty much in line with the other sports books. And tab is the kind of outlier. So they've got their pricing wrong. And 2.05 is an opportunity for Drake minus 1.5 cents. A 3.32% arbitrage, it's recommending me to bet $31. And it tells you how much percentage chance you're expected to win based on the no big odds. And it's a pretty tight width, so I can kind of trust the odds. If the width was large, then I wouldn't really trust the fair odds calculation. But in this case, it's okay. So I can go ahead and place $30. And once again, you do want to be diligent and add this to your bet tracker. So I can say I bet $30 and I can save that as an account. So then I can check my bets and see that it is populated here with the bet type as positive EV. And I can see in my dash dashboard, I have more bets in pending now. So those are the main tools, positive EV and arbitrage betting that we've gone through. Now, finally, is odds jam really the tool for you? Um, well, we can have a look at some of the reviews as well. Um, don't take my word for it. Um, as you can see, this is the amount of amount that I made. Um, I didn't start tracking my bets all the way at the beginning. I only tracked them about... Um, 20% of the way through, so it's not fully reflective. It was probably around close to like a bit over 3k. 
Um, and when I did start using OzJam, my accounts, my sports betting accounts already had a lot of restrictions and limitations on them, which is why I kind of stopped betting after a while. Um, so yeah, it really depends where you're from, what sports books you have. That's why I recommend the monthly one, so you can cancel when your accounts all get restricted. But what you can do is take a look at some of their reviews. So if I go to their odds jam reviews, so if we go to bet, betting education and then go to reviews, you can see some of how much other people have made. So in America, you can probably make a little bit more. Um, some people have been saying they make over 20K. Some people show they um, made about 5K or 3k um, some people have made even more than that um, they probably have a very large bankroll so someone made 3,000 a day that's probably very good luck um, but overall they are making money but you can see it does swing wildly so it was probably using positive EV bets and depending on the sports books you have you can make a lot more as well um, if you have more sports books the more you can make so that's another th important thing. Sign up to as many sports books as you can. Um, as it's not just about using one sports book, you're not going to make much from that. You need as many as you can have access to. So you can see more of their reviews and how much people have been making. So um, as you can see, it's not that difficult to use, but the main thing is understanding how to use it, some of the risks involved, and what each of the different tools does how to get fair odds and how to stake um, appropriately depending on your risk tolerance and the Kelly criterion. So that's it for this tutorial lesson on how to use OddsJam software to learn about arbitrage and positive EV betting and get started yourself with some examples. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. So that way I'll be able to find it quickly and respond to it. I'll definitely reply to every comment within the first 24 hours. Um, I generally won't re reply to direct messages as I get too many of those and I believe that you should just be helping everyone by putting a public comment that everyone else can see if they have the same question. So please do that and as always like this video if you learned something from it or enjoyed it and subscribe to see more arbitrage and positive EV sports betting content. See you guys in the next video.